Welcome to Courtney on Health, heard on MalcolmPresents.com, a new internet uh, streaming platform where you can hear a multitude of shows. Anyway, good morning, guys. Hello. Good morning. Well, morning, afternoon, whatever you call it. I guess well, morning, morning in LA. Me. Morning in LA and, and afternoon, afternoon here in New, here. In, in New York. And, and, even, and evening in London. And uh, and the next day in Australia. Uh, good day. Uh, but good day. <laughs> Good Take night, away, Maxine. Do, do, hello, do Courtney, and hello, Malcolm, and welcome to Courtney on Health, hello. the podcast, the Zoom cast series about how to get through times of, you know, things that are happening. Viruses are swirling everywhere, uh, and we need, you know, health and wellness more than ever, and, and, and Courtney gives great info about that. So she gives us new tips on nutrition and exercise. And Courtney is a registered dietitian with a master of science degree in nutrition and applied physiology. Uh, she's an experienced nutritional and health consultant in the New York metro area. And beyond that, uh, into, the, into the stars and will help guide you on a path to wellness and health. So from Food Matters, there was this quote, it said, the body gets run down from unhealthy food choices, alcohol, caffeine, drugs, stress, and environmental toxins that are really not good uh, and they're part of modern day life. So sometimes when someone wants to lose weight fast, uh, they often consider a liquid diet in the form of a detox or juice cleanse. I don't know. We'll have to talk about this. It's not something we will indeed. <laughs> not in my total wheelhouse, but it might work for some people. Uh, but is it he- is it a healthy way to lose weight, and, and what effects does it have on on your body? Uh, it is not entirely clear how detox cleanses help you lose weight, or how they clean your blood and eliminate harmful toxins from your body. So there are pros and cons on this subject, and so I will turn it over to Courtney, uh, the pro on this, to to give us some information about the kind of the do's and the don'ts of detox cleansers. So what, what do we know about detox cleanses? What, what, what can you tell us? Sure. I mean, first of all, hello to both of you. Um, hello. Um, of course, when I hear cleanser, I think of, you know, Ajax or Bon Ami. Or right, right, right. Things I clean one my of those. <laughs> cleanses, cleanses, and what, what does it do to you? You know, don't drink bottles of that stuff. No. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So uh, as long as I've been practicing, I feel like, detox diets, master cleanses, cleansing type diets have, have always been around to some degree uh, or, or another. Um, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about, you know, what we know about them, populations of people who absolutely should not consider them, um, and, and the, the idea behind them and, and whether, whether the research shows that they work or not. So um, you guys are both, are you guys familiar with something called the master cleanse? Master I've heard, no. I've heard it, but but I don't know. I'm I'm afraid. What is it? Um, <laughs> when yeah. I hear that, I go, what? No, okay. I know. Um, it's um, it's one of the more popular cleanses. Um, I have the three primary ingredients here right in front of me. Um, you may or may not have heard that this is um, at least historically Beyonce's go-to uh, cleanse when she does cleanse in order to prepare for a certain role. Um, so it's basically, and there are different variations. There are different types of cleansing diets. They're usually, like you said, Maxine, a liquid base. Um, this happens to be a type of tea, like a lemonade, homemade lemonade tea with basically lemon juice, water, a little bit of salt, maple syrup, um, and cayenne pepper. That's basically the combination of it. And again, it's just one of the type of um, detox beverages, um, cleansing beverages that people might hear about. That being, of course, the most popular one, because when you have a powerhouse like Beyonce, who chooses something like that, you can imagine the influential weight. That can all the from. single ladies out there. <laughs> and all the think about it, yeah. so let's take the science aside for it. I mean, all of these type of things, whether it's a Tom Brady diet that people, that every guy out there wants to follow because If I eat like that, I will, you know, I will play like him, look like him. It's no different with things like this. Beyonce is gorgeous. She's an insane town. Um, You know, many people, not all, will look at this and say, if she can do it and look like that, 
you know, you know, we will look like that too. And we all know when reality sets in and descends upon us, that that's not likely going, going to be the case. Um, so people cleanse for a variety of different reasons. They hear that by cleansing, they you know, clean their colon, they remove impurities from their body. Um, that's the second reason. They are able to lose weight. That tends to be a primary focus for a lot of people is that it either jump starts or allows them to lose weight. So you will lose weight on, let's just use the master cleanse. And why do we lose weight? Because you're cons the only calories you're getting is essentially from the maple syrup. So the maple syrup is thrown in there simply to provide enough glucose to keep you from you know, passing out. Um, and so it's just a bare minimum of calories in order to keep you functioning. So you, of course you're going to lose weight. Unfortunately, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of um, its water weight, which means it's tapping into protein and muscle. Um, so your muscle stores. Um, and then of course, once you refeed, because you can't be on this endlessly, what's gonna happen? You will regain uh, the weight because you're going to start resuming your diet naturally. Now, when you look at some of the different combinations of cleansing diets out there, some will say, you know, gradual reintroduction, usually with, you know, vegetables um, and lean proteins. Underlying any of these cleansing detox type diets, the first things to get clipped out would be things like alcohol. They want you to stop smoking, no coffee. So there's lots of, though, that part of these cleansing diets is not necessarily a bad, you know, component of it. It's the messaging that this will, you know, long-term keep your weight off um, and then secondarily, you know, prevent this, this buildup of impurities in your vital organs and then keeping your colon clean. Well, I'm, I'm a little confused. Now, this type of diet, you, you have it, that's all you eat for the whole day? For 10 days. For 10 days. 10 days? And how, and how often do you do it? Wow. Um, you know what? Some people say they like to do it quarterly. It really is. There's no hard and fast rule. Um, once a year, once a month, once a quarter. Um, if, if I'm working with somebody, and let's just say they're an otherwise healthy adult, and they really want to try this for whatever reason, you know, their, their reasons are their own. Um, I would probably suggest to them, okay, you want to try this? 10 days is a really, really long time. Long You're going time. to probably get very, very irritable, um, mm -hmm. probably after day five. Um, it doesn't fit into a whole social construct of being with other people. So there's lots of things about it that just don't work. You guys know me well enough. I'm very practical, but I'm also, when it comes to being a clinician, you got to, you got to meet your, your patient, your client halfway. So an otherwise healthy adult, I would probably say, if you want to try this for a few days, um, go ahead, you know, give it a try. You, you, you're going to lose a few pounds for sure. Um, you're going to feel very, you know, light and quote unquote empty, right? And, and trim because you're going to, oh, by the way, the other component of this is that a laxative tea usually accompanies that. So a laxative are, tea, laxative tea. So you're going I to- I can't you know, imagine. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So just think about it. And of course, you guys, we always laugh about this, right? We always end up coming to talk about poop. But the reality yep. is anybody who's going to the bathroom a couple of times a day on a regular basis feels good, right? It feels good to kind of get, the, get out. the sludge out, right? Yeah, so, all the sludge, right. Um, so you're going to feel that quote unquote lightness because you've got no food on board, you've emptied your bowels, and that usually accompanies a very light feeling, you know, in, in, internally. So that's part of the push behind it. So I suppose if I'm working with somebody, and again, no otherwise, um, you know, health issues, and they feel strongly about it. And of course, I would always say, we've got really no strong, good data to suggest that any of these cleansing and detox diets do anything that they suggest that they do, except for the short-term weight loss. Um, in terms of cleaning your colon out, having a high fiber diet, lots of fruits and veg, staying well hydrated, stir the pot by keeping active, you're going to go to 
the bathroom fairly regularly. And people who go to the bathroom move their bowels fairly regularly have an extremely clean colon. Your colon, if you're going to the bathroom that regularly, will be about as cleaned out as it needs to be. It doesn't need an assist from you. It really doesn't. Um, I, I, I know this is a, a unpleasant actually to talk about. How about the good? Old, how about the good old enema? Enema is one of the other types of things. Um, now, whereas I might say to a client, sure, um, you can maybe try this for a few days if you feel that strongly. You are more likely to do damage with an enema that's not been recommended by your healthcare provider. So for example, certain individuals who have not gone for an extremely long time, stool softeners aren't working, a healthcare provider might say, you're gonna feel much better if we do an enema. That's different. To use an enema and disrupt the normal balance of your colon and what it does in peristalsis, which is that movement of stool through your intestines is not a good idea. Your body does not like that. Um, a better way to do it is to catch it on the front end. And like we said, like we've spoken about so many times, the kinds of foods that will help keep you regular long term. Um, so enemas are really sort of in their separate category um, and they're used very, very infrequently because of the disruption um, that they may impart to your to your colon. Um, that's your colon's job is to reabsorb water. And do you have a question, Maxine? Yeah, what about... Um supplements and herbs and, and also because i was looking through this like it says that you have to eliminate foods high in heavy metals contaminants and allergens what does that mean does this cleanse do that uh and how does that work you yeah know, what, you know there's there's so much i guess outside pollutants and other things that your body absorbs and and your fat absorbs so how does this play into that Right. Well, depending on a diet that one might follow. So if somebody really needs to follow either because they have celiac or they just don't feel great when they have gluten, well, that's more of an elimination diet. And that would make sense to me. You want to, whether it's documented in the data or not, if you're not feeling good after you eat a certain food, then you should by all means eliminate it and see how you feel and then maybe try once by bringing it back in and see if those symptoms come back again. That I'm putting in a separate category than the typically detoxifying or cleansing diets that, that I hear about. So that's a little bit different. What you may hear also about, Maxine, which you touched on, is one of the theories why people suggest cleansing type diets is that it somehow removes the impurities from your major organs, like your liver mm -hmm. um, and your kidneys. So a detox diet will not do that. The data does not support that. Um, if you feel better after it, that feel good is either because you've shed a couple of pounds or like we said, because you've gone to the bathroom more regularly and you have nothing left inside of you. And for many people that feels good, which is, which is fine. But that's a far cry from, this has removed all the impurities from my liver. Um, there are two treatments that can offer some help in terms of removing heavy metals from the body. Cleansing diets are not one of them. Um, detoxifying diets um, is not one of them. One's called chelation therapy. Have you guys ever heard of that? Mm -mm. I've heard of heavy metals like ACDC. Yeah, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I'm fun. But I'm bummed. Actually, you always have to throw the music in there. I love that. Right? I, 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 well, you know me and music, so. Um, so chelation therapy is not, it's done in, in medically supervised. Um, it's an IV administration of a medicine that literally binds some of these heavy metals. So think mercury, think lead, um, and helps remove them um, from the body. That's done. So chelation therapy is an IV. Um, and again, it's done medically supervised by healthcare providers, usually in a clinic or a hospital. Um, and that is if someone has been sus you know, suspected of having some type of heavy metal poisoning. The other one, which you may have heard about, is activated charcoal. Have either one of you heard of that? Yeah, I did. Heard I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I've heard about it. My, my, one of my au pairs from Germany would have charcoal. 
you know, it's like mm. a European, it's very European kind of thing also. Yeah. 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 So, so um, so let's, let's, go, let's take a step back, like maybe even like 10, 20 years ago, where almost every medicine cabinet had something called um, syrup of Epicac. Do you guys know what that is? I've heard syrup of it. Epi yeah. It, Epicac, it makes you throw up, doesn't it? It, it absolutely is. It is the instant vomitous, you know, solution. Um, God forbid somebody in your house took in, um, you know, something, chewed on something they weren't supposed to, overdosed on a drug, kids that got into vitamins when they shouldn't have. So flash forward now, um, they've done side-by-side -side studies on the efficacy of the Epicac versus activated charcoal and lo and behold, activated charcoal may, may work better. So many people keep activated charcoal in their homes as an option for those rare instances where somebody in your home um, may take in too much. So what that is, um, so there's regular charcoal, activated charcoal, if you think about it, is put under incredibly high pressure and like super washed, like it's power wash. And by doing so, creates a very, very porous piece of charcoal. That's the activation. In fact, I read in one, um, I think it was actually in the poison control website, that the surface area of an average piece uh, of uh, serving of activated charcoal, surface area of that small piece of charcoal has the same amount as a football field. So by activating it, creating that wow. porous environment, it has an incredible ability to be able to absorb some of these heavy metals, um, like I said, typically lead and mercury. Um, the reality is, God forbid somebody in your home, particularly children, get into something, they've gotten into a drug that they shouldn't have. Personally, I wouldn't be messing around with home things. Right. I would make a beeline to for the emergency room. room. Yep. But just to explain where some of this traction is coming from, and people do keep capsules of activated charcoal in their home um, for, for these reasons. So those are the two heavy metal removing treatments that have actually got some research behind them um, to show that they they are effective in those particular cases. But do, do people purposely throw up to lose weight? I mean, you do uh, the uh, you know the ones who are sick. They have certainly uh, yes, bulimia, sadly, bulimics. Do bulimic. that, I think. Yeah. yeah, sadly for you know for individuals with disordered eating. Um, that is one way that they control, you know, distorted eating is, is as much a, a psychosocial component that it is a food, you know, uh, issue. Um, many of them know a great deal about food. Um, it's more of the psychology side that um, is, is greatly affecting them. But yeah, they'll do that to control their weight. Yeah. Um, but that is actually... Um, I, I have to look at the data, Malcolm, to see is there a greater percentage of, of individuals with disordered eating who go to things like um, the cleansing diets. I know there's a great, um, and I will say, abuse of lax laxatives sometimes in individuals with disordered eating um, for that same reason. But yeah. keep in mind, if you're going to the bathroom, there, there's a big difference between going to the bathroom, you know, one, two, even three times a day is considered normal. Um, naturally, just to switch your diet is versus somebody who's every time they eat, they're passing because of laxative abuse. You have to imagine you're absorbing no nutrients from that food because it's being given no time to sit inside your body. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, when you do this detox diet and, and you do lose weight and uh, how does this affect the the, the the muscle tone in your body because I think I, I said it before I see people you know look very lean when I go to the health club mm -hmm. I see you know a middle-aged man who comes in he looks you know, very lean he has this same suit that he wore you know when he was 17 at the same thing the same size <laughs> but then when he gets undressed to take the shower there's no muscle tone all the skin is flabby right how does yeah. how does this affect the, the muscle tone of your body uh, well, certainly long-term, either um, like ketogenic type diets, I, I, hopefully nobody's doing a cleansing type diet for greater than 10 days at a clip. I wouldn't even recommend that much. Um, but when we see these quick, um, rapid weight loss in individuals, there's no way to control 
how much of that is coming from fat stores versus how much of that is coming from lean tissue, lean muscle. So you do see sometimes more muscle wasting um, than one would like. Now, the fact of the reality is, and we've spoken about this on shows, as we age, right, we do lose muscle. So yeah, talk to you as, as, I, as I start yeah. getting older. I have yeah, these muscles. Get... Look at the guns. No. So, uh. so that doesn't mean we should all curl up in a ball and cry right. ourselves to sleep at night. It just means you're going to have to work a little harder and make sure you get pro really steady and take a protein throughout the day. Um, but that's the downside of some of these very rapid um, weight loss type diets, the, you know, these cleansing type diets um, included, because there is going to be a disproportionate amount <clears throat> of um, muscle loss. So Courtney, who, who should cleanse and who shouldn't cleanse? I mean, I would imagine that you know, if you have certain, you know, medical <coughs> issues, it's not a good idea. So who, who is it good for and who isn't it good for? Um, I would say populations of people for sure who should not be on it, children, um, diabetics, pregnant women, individuals with disordered eating, um, and perhaps individuals with, who are on blood thinners like Coumadin, Warfarin, um, <clears throat> because all of those are so tightly linked to food intake. Um, how how about second. seniors? Those, those are over 65, let's say. Um, I have to say, I would probably not recommend um, any kind of cleansing diet in a, in a senior citizen simply because thirst regulation is different. Um, they don't get, they don't feel their thirst as much <clears throat> as the rest of us. Um, so it's something to, to be mindful of, <clears throat> but those would definitely be the individuals that I would say, you know, absolutely not. For anybody else, <clears throat> if you feel that strongly about it, short, um, see how you feel, um, and then very quickly resume back to a healthful diet um, thereafter to make sure you're getting nutrients, fiber, um, and allow your body to do what it does best. Your kidneys <clears throat> and your liver do a great job of filtering all the things they need to filter from your body. That's their primary goal. Mm -hmm. Help support those organs by eating really, really well, staying well hydrated, and don't over imbibe. Yeah, I, 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 always, I always get amused when they talk <laughs> doing the detox diet and someone like Beyonce and she does the diet and look the way she looks. They, they, they forget to mention that she has a full-time trainer with her almost at 24 seven. She has a full-time dietitian with her yes. uh, full-time doctor checking all her, uh, right. uh, you know, uh, bodily all, all her vitals. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, to, to me that the, the, the question still remains, I mean, you gave us some great information, uh, is it safe? I mean, I, I just worry that if, you, and I mean, I guess a few days of doing it, but as you said off the beginning, like, you know, people doing this 10 days, I, I don't know how that's medically smart to do. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I can't, or a dietitian, I can't, you know, it's just my personal opinion. Right, because you also, you don't know when you're taking these laxative teas and you're going to the bathroom regularly, um, again, you're, you're malabsorbing, so you're not getting the nutrients that you need. Um, if you are using some of these, whether it be chelation or, or activated charcoal um, inappropriately, it could be removing things from your body that you don't want it to remove. Remember, there's no way to drive. Okay, let's remove the lead, but let's leave the calcium alone. So that is a downside to it. Certainly, Maxine. Um, I think, you know, there are, although the, the, the cleansing diet typically allows and should allow a lot of water throughout the diet, dehydration, maybe not, not so much, but electrolyte, <clears throat> electrolyte imbalances, because you're not getting the usual intake of potassium, sodium, glucose that you should be having. So there is absolutely a downside. And keep in mind, your body has a metabolism that can, you know, it, it works with you. You don't want to monkey with it too much. If your goal is to keep it running and efficient, efficiently running, then you want to make sure that you're eating regularly. And for, again, that may be different for different people, but somewhere between two meals a day up to maybe six mini meals a day is very variable, but your body relies on that regular intake of food. 
Right. Um, I think they throw in the cayenne pepper because remember we've spoken about this, pepper, spicy foods, um, at least for short term, will increase, increase metabolic rate. So they're banking on that to keep a little bit of the engine running. I, I use it. I use spicy stuff every day. But, but, but sometimes I, I think of this term, a lazy colon. If you depend too much on diabetics <laughs> or things, it, it sort of uh, takes the, the job away from the colon and it doesn't really work naturally. <clears throat> You're right. Um, so you want that. You want that normal peristalsis. You want it to do its job. You want your kidneys, your liver to do what it's designed to do, filter. So let, let me throw in a look, kind of the last question. Uh, the, the best place to get info, your dietitian, your doc, I mean, you really have to have someone uh, who are, who's guiding you in this. I, I think doing this on your own might not be the, the smartest thing to do. So I would go to you. I would say, hey, should I do this? Absolutely. And you'd probably say no, because I take a particular heart med that's a blood kind of thinner. So I'm, I'm off this. You know, there's, there's no way. But, uh, but so what, what, what should someone do? Um, if they, if it's, they feel that strongly about it, um, I would say certainly consult with a physician first mm -hmm. um, and then work closely with a dietitian um, to help you through the process. Um, and certainly help with the refeeding process. So somebody's monitoring you um, along the way. I don't think you want to fly blind with this on your own. Um, it's, it's, it's not recommended. Many, many people do, um, but it wouldn't be um, advisable. And if you feel strongly, and again, that data is incredibly limited about its usefulness. So keep that in mind. But for some people, they don't matter. It doesn't matter um, if you are going to try it. Um, the one bit of advice I would, I would offer, if you don't have a dietitian with whom you can work, keep it short, three days, you know, right. well, 10 days is a long time. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't imagine that. I mean, I just, uh, I get through my, 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 my fasting day on Yom Kippur yeah. and I'm like, okay, the uh, headaches. What, type, what type of credentials should you look for in someone advising you? Because there's so many, you know, people who are, are not qualified who, to, who, sort of advised now and you know they're, they're, they just uh, uh, out to make money what type of qualifications should a, a person have before you go to them and, and, and feel confident in, in their advice um well outside of a, a you know medical doctor i mean you can I mean, <clears throat> nurse practitioners can be quite knowledgeable um particularly if they've got a background in nutrition um if you're seeking the advice of a dietitian um obviously a registered dietitian who's got the breadth of the knowledge about what does the research really show us um, and in the absence of that working closely with the individual to help them with like what are your goals what are you trying to get out of this and a well-trained dietitian registered dietitian will be able to do that um, or um, if you're looking for somebody who's not an rd i would say if it's an individual with a master's um, in nutrition um, from an accredited university, um, they too should be able to guide, you know, interpret the, help you interpret the research and work with you on, on what are you trying to get out of this? That's important. What are your goals? Right. Um, and based on those goals, allow me to help you um, decipher whether this is the right approach for you to take. I'd go with the, make sure the person had the RD and the MD. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would definitely look, at, you know, whoever was doing it, I'd look, look them up. And make uh, sure on a personal level, do you advise this for any of your clients or do you? No, but I have had clients come to me. So I, you know, I know from where I'm speaking and it was, it was very much an adamant conversation. They, they, they cared not about what the research was. They did not want to hear that from me. So it was okay if you were in, you know, I I really want to do this. So tell me the downsides. And we went through the downsides. Again, this was somebody with in the app, per, relatively healthy adult, no medication, no help. Um, and we worked together for, you know, roughly three days. I think he ultimately went on it for maybe an extra day or two. And, you know, of course, he lost some weight. It came back on. He mm -hmm. felt good for a couple of days. And then, and then I come in, I'm sort of like the, you know, the rescue team, like coming in, I'm like SWAT, I'm like nutrition SWAT. I come in and I'm like, all right, now what can we do to help you feel good and meet that goal you wanted to meet long-term in the absence of 
some point. We have to have like a super RD symbol for you yeah. on a T-shirt. No, no, like my goal is to end the show on time. <laughs> super girl. <laughs> like, I'm special ops man for nutrition. Yeah, special ops baby on nutrition. You go you're, right. You're you're the the A team all alone. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's anyway, true. guys, it's time to say goodbye. Oh, it's time to say toodaloo and ta ta already. Right. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I'm just, I'm still, I'm, I'm so still we'll be on, uh, on the detox diet and report back uh, next week. Yeah, I'm not going on it. I'm Sorry. not coming on. <laughs> so I don't I love food too much. You guys know that. No you way. are a foodie, so, and, 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 and in good shape, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, just, Max, wrap us up. I'll just take my cues from Iron Maiden, Iron, Iron Maiden you know, the uh, metals, <laughs> heavy metals. Uh, okay. <laughs> are you the Iron Maiden? That's the question. So thanks for joining us for Courtney on Health. To get more info, follow Courtney on her Facebook page, Courtney on Health on Instagram, uh, which is at CLG Wellness, which is also on TikTok. Uh, visit her website, CourtneyGrevenies.com. For more shows, go to MalcolmPresents.com and the many shades of green.com. Uh, this is Courtney on Health, Smart Sound Nutrition, strong, safe fitness. We'll catch you again next time. Right. And See if you, you have time. any questions or suggestions, give us a uh, uh, email. It's uh, malcolmpresents at gmail.com. What about, can what you we talk email about. you, Courtney? Of course. Yes, What's yes, your yes. email? CLGwellness at gmail.com. There you go. Yeah, feel free and be anonymous. Speak All to you right. later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>